Shalom. First off, I want to start off by giving all praises, honor, and glory to the Most High God, your name Yahweh, in the name of Yahweh Shahu, the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, in the name of the Rakakwadash, which is the Holy Spirit that comforts and guides us, especially during these perilous times to come. I also want to give a double honor to our apostles and elders, a great millstone, teaching rule well with truth and sincerity, and peace and salutations to the elect. And as you can see in this video, this man popped his wife because he got tired of her yelling at him. And that's one of the things of why we come out and preach this word to our people. Because ultimately it's a warning, a labor of love to tell our people how to deal in these times. Ultimately the ones that's going to hear. Because the ones that don't listen to us is going to receive judgment, death by pain according to the scriptures. Like I said, people think that we hate the woman or ultimately just don't like the woman but we love women that's why we do this work we love well, we love our women we love women in general and we love our people so the lord told us to give warning from him the men of the lord speaks through the men of the lord speaks the words of the lord the lord speaks through his servants the prophets like the scriptures say of course we understand that there are false prophets amongst us but like i said the way that this Western society is being ran, specifically in America, is not the ways that's pleasing in the sight of Yahweh Hashem Shah. The earth was given into the hands of the wicked, the so-called white man, who forefathers Esau Edom. So ultimately, the things that he pushed, as I always say, is contrary to what's pleasing in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord is about to start, but well, as he's been doing in general, but he's going to bring forth judgment more and more and more as the days go on because like I said the Lord is speaking through his service to prophet and eventually the Lord is going to be done talking so that's why we warning our people and want especially like I said this is for the women warning these women to get in order because these spirits created for vengeance is out here and these men are getting tired of how the woman especially like I said in this western society in America how they're doing things. That's why you got the passport bros. They're going overseas to find women that act the way that women are supposed to act. Feminine. Obedient to their husband. But like I said, I'm going to play the video. A man is accused of killing his wife on her 60th birthday because he got tired of being yelled at. 59-year-old Timothy Darnell Lewis is charged with first-degree reckless homicide. And as you can see, he killed her on her birthday. That's similar to... <laughs> Julio Fulio got killed on his birthday. We tell our people celebrating birthdays are idol worship. We're not supposed to be worshiping ourselves. We're not supposed to be worshiping Jesus Christ. We're not supposed to be worshiping Allah, Buddha, any of these false gods. We're supposed to be worshiping Yahweh, Shem Yahweh Shah. And like I said, for the people that don't believe it, they're going to find out real soon. Because when the Lord start issuing out judgment heavily, more than what he's been doing in the past, in the past, and in, in these past days, we're gonna see who's the true and living power. And that's Yahweh Hashem Yahshad, like the Lord said in various scriptures. One is in Jeremiah the second chapter, I believe, starting to the twenty-sixth verse. He gonna be, he gonna basically tell you to call on them gods that you've been calling on, and them false gods, like I said, Jesus Christ, Allah, etc., is not gonna save you. Salvation is. It's only one name under the heaven that you shall be saved by, and that's your how about Shimei Shai, as it's written in Acts 4, the fourth chapter and the 12th verse. But I'm going to continue on. And use of a dangerous weapon in the killing of his wife, Jacqueline Beeson. The incident occurred in the 800 block of North Cass Street in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. According to a criminal complaint, a Milwaukee police officer arrived at the scene to find Beeson unconscious, slumped towards the passenger side of her gray Toyota Corolla. Lewis confessed to investigators after his arrest, stating that he got tired of being yelled at by his wife and her daughter. He admitted to taking out his gun and shooting Beeson once, possibly in the jaw, as he just lost it right there. Lewis asserted that no one else was involved in the shooting. Despite CPR attempts, Beeson was pronounced dead at the scene. Medical examiners determined that she had been shot in the left cheek, with the bullet exiting from the back of her head. During the moments leading up to the shooting, Beeson had been on the phone with her daughter. The daughter overheard an argument between... In Milwaukee... 
And like I said in one of my past lessons, these spirits created for vengeance can be on anything. And that included that bullet that entered into her jaw and came out the back of her head. The Lord's incorruptible spirit is in all things. I believe it's written in Wisdom of Solomon, the 12th chapter. The issues of death belong to the Lord, whether you believe it or not. But no telling what she was yelling at him about on her birthday. Probably complaining like these women do. He probably was trying to his best to help her have a, or a get, basically trying his best to give her a, a so-called happy birthday. And she probably was still complaining. And the man probably snapped, <laughs> as he said. Because I, 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 I'm, I'm, it's hard to believe that her being his wife, that that was her first time yelling at him like that. The man married the woman. So obviously he had some type of care or passion for her. But people like to play stupid like, oh, she just, he just, the man is just this crazy person that do things for no reason. That stuff, like I said, wasn't for no reason. The man got tired. And like a lot of these men get tired of these women and end up in jail or murdered over these women. But first, Chris, I'm going to jump into a Sirach 25th chapter because if you, for you women and you men, especially in these times, Sirach, the 25th chapter and the 26th chapter is basically telling you how you supposed to, you should be dealing in these times. And like I said, it's a, it should be a warning for you women on how to not to act in these times. It's various scriptures along, you know, amongst the Holy Bible as well. But this is like the main the main chapters that we jump to when we getting on these women. But I'm going to grab Sirach 25 and I'm going to start at the top of reads. And three things I was beautified and stood up beautiful before, both before God and men. The unity of brethren, the love of neighbors, and this is the point, and a man and a wife that agree together. And obviously they didn't agree together because I'm pretty sure they didn't agree. She didn't agree for him to shoot her in her face. And they wouldn't even arguing if they agreed together. That's point blank period. And like I said, I'm, it's hard for me to believe that that was the first time she'd been yelling at him. Because I don't think he, she would have made it to being his wife. Sirach 25, I'm going to jump down to verse 13. It reads, give me any plague but the plague of the heart. And we know the heart is the law, which means your mind. And obviously that man snapped. And the, any wickedness but the wickedness of a woman. So her <laughs> yelling at him caused him to have a plague of the heart, which is the mind, you know. And ultimately end up shooting her. Like he said, he just he just lost it. That's why the Lord is ultimately raising up his men. The ones he put the spirit on to, to do so to be judges, rulers, because that's ultimately where we're going to be in the kingdom of heaven. When the Lord established our, the Israelite kingdom, which the Israelites are the Lord's chosen people, which they consist of the so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, and the Israelite foreigners that may look like heathen, but are not heathen because their father's seed line traces back to one of the 12 genders of the 12 tribes of Israel. And in my bio, the Lord is raising up his men. It's going to start with the 144, I mean, of course, Yahweh Shai, King David, the rest of the 12, the rest of the 144,000 is going to be the governing body. And then the rest of the elect and ultimately the the heathen, the other nations are going to be under subjection to us because as of right now, the earth is given into the hands of the wicked and things like this is going to continue to happen because like it says, if the Lord hasn't shown the days, there will be no flesh to be saved in this kingdom. But a lot of people want this kingdom to continue on. They, they love the wickedness going on. They love women usurping authority over the man. Like the Lord said, like like it says in First Timothy, a woman is not supposed to usurp authority over a man, and that's ultimately what that woman was trying to do, and that's why she got judged. Matter of fact, I'm gonna grab it since I since it came out. First Timothy two and eleven. It reads, "Let the woman learn the silence with all subjection." And what they do in this kingdom, they allow women to be preachers, they allow women to be managers, police officers, etc. But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. Women are supposed to be in silence. They're not supposed to be running off at the mouth, telling men what to do. Of course, the, the order is the, 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 the heavenly father, Yahweh, Yahweh Shah, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ's son, then man, then woman, then children. 
I'm going to continue on this. For Adam was first formed, then Eve. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Notwithstanding, she should be saved in childbearing if they continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety. So for the most part, women are going to be saved through childbearing. And ultimately, that's going to be the ones that's under the covering of a man of the Lord. So these women need to get in order, just like us, the men of the Lord, are getting in order as well. We're not telling you to do nothing that we're not doing, like I always say. Sirach, I'm going to jump back to Sirach of Ecclesiastes chapter 25, and I'm going to start at verse 16. It reads, I had rather dwell with a lion and a dragon than to keep house with a wicked woman. And I'm pretty sure that's how he felt, because like I said, he probably feel at peace now that he's away from that woman. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. We never know. The wickedness of a woman changes her face and darkness her countenance like sackcloth. Because yeah, a woman be all loving, etc. Then all of a sudden she done changed. Like I didn't, you know, growing up, I'm not gonna lie, being around my grandmother, etc. It's like, I ain't saying they wicked or my mother. And I'm just saying like, you can see that one minute they all happy, then all of a sudden it's just like, what the hell wrong with you? Verse 17, the wickedness of a woman, whatever. Verse 18, it reads, her husband shall sit among his neighbors, and when he heareth it, shall sigh bitterly. Yeah, because it's like, God damn, I got to go back around this woman. You know how some people, some men, they don't even want to come home. They, 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 they don't even want to deal with the nonsense. They'd rather just stay out all night. Then a woman get mad. Oh, what you been doing all night? Who want to come home early for her to start yelling at, at you? And then you possibly snap like this man and, and put her to death. <laughs> Verse 19. All wickedness is but little to the wickedness of a woman. Let the portion of a sinner fall upon her. So ultimately us that's, that's seeking the Lord. Seeking his wisdom and knowledge and understanding. We're learning how to deal in these situations. And ultimately learning what situations that we must, should be avoiding so that we won't end up in these types of situations. And that's what we're doing. Like I said, that's what we're teaching our people, the ones that the Lord put the Spirit on to do so. Like he said, he set up passes according to his heart to feed his people with knowledge. I'm going to continue on verse 20. It reads, as the climbing up a sandy way is the to the feet of the age, so is a wife full of words to a quiet man. Because like... Some of these women need to understand just being quiet. It's just it's just beautiful. Just 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 being silent. Some men just want to come home, you know, and just chill and don't want to hear no yelling and complaining and sob stories. Cause a lot of times women be complaining about what's going on at the job or what they gotta do at work and stuff. It's like you're not even supposed to be working. But these women ask to be have equal rights and and this feminist stuff, and now they want to complain when they have to go to work and deal with the, the hard burdens and struggles that ultimately that's a man has the spirit to be able to, to, to go through adversity and stuff like that. These women are not going to be able to deal with that, and that's why they get to complaining and, 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 and overly drinking when they get the free time to and just ultimately abusing themselves because they have over much liberty, especially when they get the time off. But you see a lot of these women out on social media complain about how tough it's getting. But since they don't have a man or they have multiple men, they complain on social media just to get sympathy from the media, the comment section, etc. Like, this kingdom has to be destroyed. And it's going to be destroyed by way of World War Three, according to the scriptures. I'm going to jump down to verse 23. It reads, The wicked woman abateth the courage. And we know abateth means like to stop. Because it's like, you have a wicked woman, she get the going on you as far as in like trying to bring you down. Oh, you ain't nothing. You, you, this man can do better than you. Or, or just basically just acting all just chaotic, out downright crazy to the point that she bring down the spirit of her man and ultimately, he is like he just don't have the, the strength to want to do anything, you know. 
Like some of these men, they be, you know, they love their woman. So uh, they, they, they looking for comfort. But we understand, like I said, the comfort is going to be through the Vakakal Dajra, the Holy Spirit. But like I said, a person that don't have this truth, they looking for the comfort, you know, the pillar of rest that the woman is supposed to be. And then they come home or they around their woman and their woman treating them like trash. And now they just, they just down. They don't have no courage. They, they don't have no... Cause you know when a man, you know when he when he feeling good, his mom make him feel good. He, they they come to work smiling. Oh yeah, my wife did this. She cooked. She 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 she. I got a beautiful wife. But then if they don't, some of them, you know, they come to work mad, upset, and my wife been acting like an ass. And it's like yeah, the woman don't want to use their beauty for the righteous stuff. They want to use their beauty to be wicked, to to be whores. To feel like they can just talk to their man any type of way, which is off. But I'm going to continue on making and heavy encounters in the wounded heart, which, you know, the heart is the lie of the mind. Thinking about thinking about how, like I said, the argument you have with your woman, etc. A woman that will not comfort her husband in distress and make it weak and hands and feeble knees. Basically, that's the point. Like I said, don't want to comfort the husband, but want to do everything else. Everything but comfort her husband. And obviously that woman wasn't comforting her husband to the point he had to pull out that iron and, and, and like I said, shoot her in the face. But I'm going to jump over to 20, Ecclesiastes 26, or Sirach 26, you know, because it's a balance. It reads, Blessed is the man that have a virtuous wife, for the number of his days should be double. A virtuous woman rejoiceth her husband, and he shall fulfill the years of his life in peace. A good wife is a good portion which shall be given in the portion of them that fear the Lord. I'm going to jump down to verse 7. It reads, And an evil wife is a yoke shaken to and fro. He that have hold of her is though he held a scorpion. And you know that's that's not that's not a um a comfortable position to be in. And you know a yoke is like that yoke of iron put on your neck. It's like God damn you Slaving like a motherfucker, and you got the yoke, the yoke of iron just on your neck, shaking to and fro. You, you that, like I said, those that, that not comfortable situations to be in. Like I said, these scriptures is powerful if you if you can get into them and understand them. Like the scriptures say, uh, Revelation one and three, blessed is he that readeth. Which we go into that word, readeth me and understand. I'm gonna jump down to verse twenty seven because this is ultimately what. <laughs> She was a loud crying woman and a scold should be sought out to drive away with enemies. Because like a loud crying woman is like the trumpet being blown for war. Ultimately to, to, drown, to drive away enemies. Like, like I said, the trumpet is ultimately the sounds that we had to basically give warning for certain things. And us the men of the Lord that the Lord put the spirit on his do though to be out on the highways and the byways and on these internet epistles is ultimately blowing the trumpet warning our people that they need to get right before all hell breaks loose because when the Lord Yahweh and our Lord Yahweh Shah returns who the world even calls Jesus Christ when the heavenly father Yahweh gives him to go to do so once these prophecies come to pass he's not going to meet these devils as a man he's going to crack them clouds and he's not going to be talking no more like i always say because he's already speaking through his servants the prophets but up until that time people are going to be getting judged like this woman got judged matter of fact i'm gonna jump over to sirach or ecclesiastes chapter 36 and i'm gonna start at verse 22 it reads the beauty of a woman cheereth the countenance and a man loveth nothing better like i said because we love women if there be kindness, meekness, and comfort in her tongue, then is not her husband like other men? So basically, it's like, yeah, if you got a beautiful woman, a lot of dudes be like, damn, I wish I had a woman like that. Will you wish? Do she got a sister? Do she got a, she she got a, yeah, like, she, like that's the thing to do. Saying like, God damn, like, because for the most part, these women don't want to do nothing for their man. All they want to do is run their mouth like this woman did. And ultimately, she ended up getting judged. Some women get away with it. But, like we understand, Ecclesiastes 8 and 11. Because since it's against the evil workers and executed speedily, therefore the sons of the hearts of men are fully setting them to do evil. Because judgment isn't going forth 
expediently in this kingdom, because ultimately this is a queendom. The earth is given into the hands of women. Wicked, they put the woman on the pedestal. But like I said, the Lord is sending out these spirits created for vengeance. Verse 24 it reads, He that getteth a wife beginning for possession, a help like unto himself, and a pillar of rest. Because people sit there and, and act as if they don't understand that during the time, you know, when a man, when a father gives his daughter over to a, a, a man, that's basically the father transferring his possession over to that man. So you becomes that man possession. But in this kingdom, like I said, they put the woman on the pedestal. They don't want to hear that. They want to be the head. They want to be the, the possessor of the man. They want to tell the man what to do. Usurp authority over man. And like I said, the Lord is issuing the judgment. And going fighting up, fighting against the Lord, it's not going to end well for you. Like it says, um, Hebrews 10 and 31 that's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living power. But matter of fact, I'm going to jump back to Sirach 26 and verse 14. And in, the, in here it reads, A silent and loving woman is a gift of the Lord, and there is nothing so much worth as a man well instructed. Yeah, so the silent and loving woman is a gift of the Lord. And a lot of these women don't want to be a gift of the Lord. They ultimately want to be, uh, um, I don't know, a, a plague of the Lord. <laughs> you would think a woman would want to be a gift, a treasure. Like I said, but the fact of the matter is that these women, they so used to being dealing with men that's ultimately not raised with understanding. And whose fault is that? Because since the earth was given into the hands of the wicked, he did a number on our people. So he allowed these women to get the benefits of kicking a man out the house so the men of understanding aren't able to raise their children to have understanding. And ultimately, these women raise these children to be de degenerates, just the men raised going up to be feminine just like them and going off emotions. And this is what happened. And like it says, Sirach 25 and 24, the woman became the beginning of sin and through her we all die. And a lot of people are going to die when it comes down to the, to the hour of temptation, which is going to include the mark of the beast, the RFID microchip. A lot of these men are going to follow out of these women and take the chip and ultimately be destroyed, like the scriptures say. Along with a lot of people in this world, because like it says, there'll be many that perish then be saved. So like I said, the point of this lesson is that you... People need to get in order because the issues of death belong to the Lord. And the Lord's judgment was for that woman to go out that way, whether you believe it or not. But Lord, what a never edifying. Shalom.